What's up guys, I'm Zach and welcome back to Workshop Edits. In today's project, we're gonna be making this hog wire panel fence. It's built entirely out of pressure treated four by fours, two by sixes, and these prefabricated hog wire panels that I got from Home Depot. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this video is actually gonna have three components to it and I'm gonna leave chapters within the uh, timeline if you want to skip ahead to them. So the first one, I just wanna talk about the prep work and the materials and the tools that went into this project. Then I will dive straight into the build. Just a spoiler, it was so hot when I decided to build this project in the dead summer heat in Southern California. So I don't go into an overly large amount of detail. So if you do have further questions about certain things that I do, feel free to leave a comment and I would be happy to respond to those questions. And then at the end, I just wanna spend a little bit of time talking about my final thoughts and some extra tips that I would have when building a fence like this. So like I said, this is a hog wire, hog panel fence that you probably see a lot in the Midwest. The entire thing is built out of eight of these prefabricated hog wire panels that I got from Home Depot. They're actually a little bit tricky to locate in Southern California. I had to go to three different Home Depots to buy them. They come in both six and eight feet in length panels and they are three feet high. I purchased eight of them. Each of them cost about $90 a piece. So that was about 720 bucks for just the panels. But again, if you were to sort of try to fabricate these yourselves, it would be way more expensive, super time consuming. So it's definitely worth it if you're going for this style of fence. One recommendation that I would have is calling ahead to the Home Depots that you are trying to visit, even if it says that they have them online, because I went to two different ones that said they had them in stock and they didn't. So that was fun. Rest of the fence is built from two by six pressure treated wood, as well as four by fours that are mounted 18 to 20 inches into the ground. Because the fence is uh, about 40 inches high, I read that it's good to have anywhere from like a third to half of the overall length of your post buried in the ground. So I went with just a standard kind of 18 to 20 inches deep, and that seems to be working out just fine. So besides the hog panels and the pressure treated wood, I also used five bags of quickcrete fast setting concrete, which was incredibly easy to work with. And I would highly recommend if you're building a fence where you want to mount things into the ground using concrete. I also used three bags of three quarter inch gravel that created like a three to four inch um, base at the bottom of the holes before setting and compacting the posts into the ground and using the concrete. Overall, the project cost about $1,300 to do, again, with the majority of the cost coming from these panels, which all included with taxes was about eight hundred dollars but again well worth the purchase and I'm really excited about the aesthetic and overall look of the fence. Next thing I want to talk about is just tools that I use for the project. Now everybody is going to have a different set of tools. I have a pretty well stocked workshop so I designed my workflow around having a really well powered table saw and a dado stack, a miter saw, as well as what I consider the hero of the project, an auger. Now this was a six inch auger that had the ability to drill all the way down to 30 inches. Again, I only ended up drilling down to about 20 uh, overall for each of these posts. And to be honest, I'm not actually sure if I could have completed this project without it. I did try manually digging some of these holes off camera and I honestly don't know if it physically would have been possible. So if you don't have the ability to buy one of those, I would highly recommend looking at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever your big box center is around you that does tool rentals because they're actually quite affordable if you just need to rent one for like half a day and drill out a bunch of holes really quickly. Again, not 100% necessary, but if you are thinking about tackling this kind of project, I personally cannot imagine trying to do it without it. So the last thing I wanna talk about is the overall prep that went into actually building this fence. So this was a six week project where I completely overhauled my front yard from really crappy weeds and grass and ugly bushes to this more drought tolerant, drought friendly landscape, which is becoming more of a trend in Southern California just due to water regulations. So a couple of steps that I went through ahead of it were completely demoing and removing the old lawn, which was backbreaking work. I have so much respect for the people who do that. Lots of stump removals, irrigation repair, uh, capping all my sprinkler lines, prepping for drip irrigation installs, grading and demoing more land just in prep of actually being able to set this fence in place because I wanted to build the fence first once I had the overall lawn prepped so that then once the fence was built I can complete it by installing plants, 
dropping in the drip irrigation line, putting in mulch, and then finishing with this DG pathway, and then just doing a series of other things aesthetically on the house to just kind of bring everything together. One of the most important things that I'll probably get a question on for somebody who's seeing this video is the type of prep work I did ahead of time and figuring out if I need a permit to build a fence. So I'll just say I am in Southern California. My research told me that if I am building a fence that is 42 inches or lower in your front yard, you do not need a permit for it. However, if you are in a different county in California or you are in a different state, I would highly recommend looking into the rules. If you're in an HOA, they're gonna have their own restrictions regardless of where you live, so just do your homework ahead of time. And the last probably most important thing that I did and that you should 100% do in prepping for something like this is to, uh, at least in Southern California, there is a line that you can call or you can go to digalert.com. I'll put a link to it in the description. And what they're gonna do is offer a free service, again, because you're gonna be drilling pretty deep into your front lawn. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're not drilling into any gas lines, water lines, sewer lines, existing cable lines, anything like that. So I did that prep work ahead of time. They come out and actually mark on your street and up into your driveway where all those things are and give you like uh, sort of go ahead that where you are gonna be doing your build is not gonna interfere with any of those things and cause huge problems down the road. So I just gave you a ton of information. Again, this type of project is super challenging to do, but if you break it up into steps and you do your prep ahead of time, it's actually very manageable to do as long as you also have the right tools. So thanks for listening to that part. Uh, now let's get on to the build. All right, so to kick this project off, what I'm going to do is take the pressure treated four by fours that I got they are 10 feet long and I'm just gonna cut them in half. I was reading and I'll throw a chart up for it that if you are doing a fence that is roughly 36 to 42 inches high, you need about 18 inches of buried post, including uh, a four inch base of gravel and then the cement. And then that gives me enough height out of a five foot post to make the total fence. All right, so just finished cutting up the posts. Now that those are done, what I'm gonna do is start laying out the posts and figuring out where I'm gonna drill my holes. I'm then going to set up a straight line that is two feet back from each end of my yard on the curb and have that string set up. Then once I get my post set up and the fences in between, I can mark out and start um, boring out the holes for the concrete. I don't know if you can see it very well, but um, a company named Vivor sent me this giant six inch boring uh, drill type thing that is gonna make the job so much easier to do. I do have a hole digging shovel that I think I'll also have to use to supplement it, but we're gonna be using this thing almost exclusively to drill out the nine holes that I need in the yard for the four by fours. Hopefully it's gonna go a lot quicker for it. I'm super excited to have it. Well, I certainly picked maybe the hottest day of the year to uh, continue with this project. All right, so here's where we're at. All six posts for the front part of the fence have been dug. I have three more to dig over here, but I'm going to actually wait to finish doing them until I set all the posts in the front here, because I want to use that back corner as a reference point for the uh, length and distance in between those posts. Like I know what it's gonna be, but I want that post to be set before I go do anything. So I did a lot of just like simple, straight up research on how to set fence posts, uh, specifically pressure treated four by fours. What I found was you essentially want the hole to be at least a third as deep as the overall height of the post. My fence is gonna be roughly 36 to 40 inches high, so I just went with 18 because it was a clean number and I already had something that was 18 inches long that I could just use as a reference point. The way to properly set these, as far as I then understand, is we're gonna do three to four inches of gravel and we're gonna compact it. For 
but then gonna place the post where it needs to go roughly. We're then gonna pour in the quick creep concrete and I'm using the fast setting concrete because it sets in anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes and then is workable at 400 PSI after two hours. And we're just gonna repeat that process. We're gonna make sure that the length stays consistent between all of these posts so that the hog fence fence properly. And we're also gonna make sure that everything is referenced against the front of the string line properly so that they are all even. And we're also gonna make sure that they're level from both ways. And I'm just gonna use some sacrificial pieces of wood and some stakes to make sure that happens. Once I have all those in place, I'm basically just gonna then repeat the process for the last set of posts over there. All right, it is day two. It's already crazy hot and I just moved a bunch of lumber after doing a run to the store, so I'm like already a sweaty mess. All right, so all of the posts are set. I let them cure overnight. It's been close to 20 hours, I think. And based on just the quick crete directions, that means they're, the bases that have cured are about 1,000 PSI. They'll continue to get stronger over the next month, but they're like totally ready to be workable. So the next step is we are going to take a bunch of pressure treated two by sixes. And aesthetically, I decided that I wanted to use two by sixes split in half for the long stretchers versus two by fours because I thought they would just look a little bit too chunky. So I'm gonna take eight two by tens and rip them in half. Those will give me my top and bottom stretchers. Once I have all of those ripped, I'm going to swap to a dado blade and you probably can't really see it, but these hog panel fences are about a quarter inch wide. I'm gonna use a dado stack and rip a groove in each of those pieces so that it can sit in between the top and bottom. Then we are going to go along each one and just slowly attach them. One thing I did last night was I set up my line laser and just marked a level part at each post and that, that marking was arbitrary because what I wanna do is then use that on each post as a reference line so that I can then get horizontal stretchers across all um, eight of the pieces. Sorry, I'm just such a sweaty mess. The one other thing that I wanna do is also just based on all the lumber I have, I'm gonna pick the best seven of those boards that I have. No, best six of those boards that I have and I'm gonna use those for my top railing. So I'm gonna set those aside because those will aesthetically look the best and then the rest will be for stretchers. So I'm gonna head over to the table saw and get things going. Twenty minutes later. Okay, that was an incredible amount of work. And naturally, because the wood was wet, it set off my saw stop break. So that was a fun 20 minute detour. Luckily I have another break. And what I ended up doing honestly was just turning off the saw stop feature for all of the cuts, including the dados, because I didn't want to set off again. A lot of pressure treated wood is honestly probably not meant to be ripped that way. And yeah, eventually I got done. I was just extra safe. I used a push stick and my gripper and yeah, everything worked out really good. Okay, so all the pieces have been cut on the table saw. Dados are ready to go. I cut everything to length by post. So now what I'm gonna do is using that line that I marked with my line laser last night, I created a couple of just little jigs that will slip over the post so that I can mount them without having a second person because I want it to be level and I don't want it to be a pain in the butt because it's so hot out. I'm just gonna start mounting each post one by one and making sure that they're level. I haven't quite decided exactly how high I'm going to do things higher or lower in reference to that mark I did. So it's gonna be totally arbitrary. It's aesthetics based on what you wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get started. Let's do it.
All right, so one last thing, because my camera ended up getting corrupted at the very end of the actual build, was I took a circular saw and I cut all of the tops of the mounted posts to length. Super easy to do, and then, and then obviously after doing that is when I laid the top railing on this piece. So uh, sorry that the footage got corrupted and I couldn't show that, but just sometimes it happens when you're building things. All right, so that is gonna wrap it up for this project. Just a couple of tips I would give to wrap this up. One, maybe don't do this project in the dead heat of the summer. I personally experienced for the first time ever heat exhaustion and was completely down for the count for about two days. It was brutal, muscle cramps, nausea, total exhaustion. I was basically dead to the world. So listen to your body, trust your body, and um, be smart when you are tackling a project of this scale alone. Again, like one of the most difficult things was actually just hauling all of the different material from uh, the Lowe's and the Home Depot's that I got it from because my cart, I think, ended up being about a thousand pounds. And when it's a hundred degrees out and you're moving that kind of weight, it can really take it out on you. So listen to your body and prep accordingly. I just wanna reiterate that having the right set of tools is gonna to make this project a lot more feasible. Yes, all of it can roughly be done by hand. You don't need a table saw to rip things down and shape things. Obviously, I design my projects around the capabilities that I have. So just as you're planning these projects, make sure that you have the right tools in place. Don't be afraid to rent and learn how to use a new tool if it's gonna make it a lot easier. And I would say other than that, figure out the style of fence that you wanna build. We absolutely love this aesthetic. We completely understand that it's not for everybody, but so far, my wife loves it. All of the neighborhood seems to love it. And then I personally just couldn't be more proud with the final result of it. I mean, never really actually tackled a project like this. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot of information and I know at different times I probably could have offered up more, but again, I was kind of battling the elements and the exhaustion of my own body. So if you do have any more questions or if you learned something, please feel free to leave a comment and I would be happy to answer that uh, to the best of my capabilities. So thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys on whatever it is that I'm building next. Bye.